Today I've got some fun s'more DIYs for you. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. So for the first of eight, we got s'more block minis. These are super easy to do and I'm going to give you some options. This is Dollar Tree stickers. I got them in the crafter section. You can get yours anywhere you can find them. I thought these were perfect. When I saw them, I was inspired to do this project. There are 96 stickers in there. I've got some little wood blocks. I also have some tower blocks in case you don't have them. And also some thrifted little um, scrabble pieces if you need them. So I'm gonna cut this border off to make it smaller and test it out and see which one of these is going to be the best option. So now I have just the little face on the little chocolate bar and it fits absolutely perfectly onto that square. There's just a little bit of overhang, but I'll show you how to fix that shortly. So if you don't have any paint, this is an option for you. Go ahead and use your little stickers and there's a chocolate bar, a graham cracker and marshmallow. And there are several different faces to choose from. The marshmallow is a little bit bigger it's kind of rounded on the sides and the bottom so just be aware he's gonna have to have a little more trimming down than the other ones and you can do it all over if you want to but I wanted to test it out with just doing around the sides and not using anything in the top or the bottom so again if you have no paint you could do it just like this you can use some Mod Podge or double stick tape to help it stay in place if you would like I decided to try mine with a white top and a white bottom and then stickers around the four sides. And I like this better. So I'm just using some of my chalk paint here to, to paint this up, but you can use acrylic or whatever you have. And again, you don't, if you don't have paint, you don't have to worry about it. Just to make sure that my stickers stay in place for a long time, I'm using some of this glue stick. And don't worry about the purple, it does disappear when it's dry. And I'm just gonna face these all in the same direction. So each one of these little stickers will be facing outward so that if they were sat on the bottom, you could see all the faces in the correct position. Sorry about the focus there, just trying to focus on the background, set of my hand. And then again on each side. So what I have is a white bottom, a white top, I have two graham crackers, a chocolate, and a marshmallow, just like when you build your own s'mores. So if you have some sharp scissors, you can trim those around to make them fit perfectly and have no overhang. And that's what they'll look like when they are all done. Aren't they cute? There are so many options with these two. This just could be a base idea for you. Perfect for a tiered tray, I think. I'm gonna show you all of these on a tear tray at the end, so be sure that you stay tuned. Now we're gonna do a mini s'more garland. I'm gonna use some thrifted Scrabble blocks, but you can get these at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna show you a little trick so that you can paint these without, even though I have paint all over my hands, <laughs> with as little mess as possible. Just use a tiny dot of glue, put it down on a piece of cardboard or some leftover paper or whatever you have here, scraps and then just paint on the face and then that way you can face you can paint all the way around the edges too and you don't get it all over your fingers and you don't keep having to repaint every place that you touch where you know kind of lifts up the paint so just a little dot and it'll hold it in place and it works really great too for in the end when you are drying everything they won't move around and scoot all over the table so I have a little drying tool here, but you can use a blow dryer, you can use a fan, or you can just wait for these to dry on your own. Once they're dry, we can apply the stickers. These stickers do have a white border, um, as you noticed in the other picture, but we don't have to do a lot of trimming here, except on this little marshmallow, and then a little bit on the other ones. It's kind of rounded on the sides, so we're just gonna cut the rounded sections off, and it'll fit right down on here. The reason I painted these white is because I want them to stand out. And I think this is a perfect way to do it. Although the marshmallow kind of blends right in. I love these little faces. These are so cute. Have you seen these at your Dollar Tree? I was very surprised because it doesn't look like a Greenbrier uh, brand. Look at those faces. Those are so cute. 
So now they're down, they're dry, they are stuck down. And I decided that I'm going to use some more of those scrabble pieces to spell out, to spell out s'more. Or s'mores, whatever you want to do here. And then decide how I want to do it. Do I want to do a double strand? Do I want to do a single strand? What pattern do I want to use with my little faces here? And then what kind of string are we going to use to hang it? So I've got some options and I think I'm going to go with this jute here. Just my preference. You can use whatever type of cording or jute, colored twine, whatever you have. I've put this on my cutting board because it is like a silicone base. So if glue gets on there, it'll peel off rather than it sticking down to the paper, my crafting paper that is on my table. So this just keeps my workspace nice and tidy and it peels away very easily. I'm pressing that down. I put a little hot glue on the top of each one of the letters and then I'm pressing the rope into it. Now I had this on my cool temperature, so no worries, but protect your fingers. And then I'm gonna start adding on the little cute sticker faces. And you can do whatever, you know, whatever pattern you like here, whichever way you like it. And certainly you don't have to do one of each. You could do all marshmallows if you wanted to, or you know, whatever you like. I think this is a cute pattern. You can also add beads if you would like, but I decided not to do that. I like the simplicity of it. Now we're going to do a s'more tower block stack. So easy. The part you won't see is me painting these blocks. So I have two light, I have two blocks that are painted in a lighter color, brown. I have a white block, and I use my chalk paint for that. And then I have a darker color brown, which is like a teddy bear brown, that's going to represent our chocolate. So we have one graham cracker, one marshmallow, we're going to add the chocolate, and then we're going to add one more graham cracker on the top. Now what I'm doing is just squishing this down so that my block is flat and it, it appears to be more like one piece instead of a bunch of gaps and I don't want glue to come out. So that's why I did it this way. You can see it sliding around. I'm just trying to square it up here. Not a big deal if you don't. Pull them apart and fix it if you need to. And this is what it's gonna look like. A little s'more. So I'm gonna put a bow on the top. For those of you who like bows, if you don't wanna do it that way, you can certainly try any other little technique you wanna use to doll it up. I'm gonna double over this twine. And this was in the Shore Living, I think it's called. Um, it's the little beachy section of Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna double it up and make a simple little bow Little shoestring bow with it. Fluff it around, pull them out like I like them, and because it has a little burlap, it does have some stiffness in it, which I like, because you can kind of work with those little loops and they'll stay where you want them to stay. I cut apart the section that had the little, um, that was doubled up, so that I would have equal tails on both sides, and then I'm going to add some glue in the middle and put it right on the top of our little s'more. And there you go. You know, you always gotta fluff that bow. Cute. Now we're gonna make a mini ladder. This isn't specifically something that you would need for a s'more craft, but I think they look great on tier trays. So I think this is something that you can use now and you can carry it on through and use it for other holidays and seasons. Using whatever type of popsicle stick you have, and mine are just about the standard size, the little craft sticks. I'm gonna use two for the legs and I'm going to cut one into three pieces. And these are going to be the rungs of the ladder. I'm just using my little um, pliers here, my little tools. They cut really well. Somebody told me that they are called bullnose pliers. Uh, feel free to correct me or give your, um, your knowledge. I'd love to have more information on that, but all I know is it is a very good multi-purpose tool. And I got a thrift store, so you know, I love it even more. All right, so we're just gonna take the three sections and decide where we want the rungs of the ladder to be. Fix yours however you like. I'm going to put mine three. Um, one's gonna be almost in the center, and then the other two are going to be around and about mm, maybe three quarters of an inch down from the ends. I left the ladder legs round for now, but 
uh, you know, that's your choice. You can leave them round or you can cut them off, and I do cut them off shortly. You can leave it plain like this. You can take some antiquing wax and color it or stain it. You can paint it any color you like. You could do black if you wanted to. Whatever you like. I went ahead and cut the bottoms off, thinking that I might want to keep the round sections. And I just went over it with my plaster chalk paint. I used plaster instead of bright white. Plaster just seems to me more like a marshmallow color. So I thought it was fitting. And I'm gonna go over, all over this. You could use a little glue on the back to paint it as well if you wanted to. But I got in a rush. I'm drying it all off now. And then I'm gonna take my sanding block and I'm gonna rough it up and distress it a bit. So I'm just turning it at an angle, like a 45 degree angle, and just kind of taking off the paint on the edges of the pieces. And of course, on the feet, that's where they would normally get where, you know, where you put them down. And so I'm looking at it and trying to decide, yeah, I think I wanna take the roundness off. Realistically, you wouldn't have a ladder this small, but if it was a big ladder, you wouldn't have round feet. I don't believe that would be safe. So I'm just knocking those off, making them nice and flat. What do you think? You'll see at the end what we do with it. Now we have a beaded s'more mini sign. I'm gonna recycle a project that I did last fall. Very easy, these come from the Dollar Tree. And you can get them in a variety of backgrounds. I am just going to be painting this section with that same plaster chalk paint. This does not have to be neat because it's going to be covered. I went to Canva and printed out some s'mores. And I do have Canva Pro now, so I am loving that. I get all kinds of goodies, and I don't have to search all over the internet for them. I'm just going to trim two different sizes. I printed off two different sizes of the same s'more. And it's gonna fit nicely on here. So I wrapped some burlap just on the front side of there after the paint's dry. I'm gonna press it down into the frame. If I do it this way, I don't have to burn my fingers or risk making a mess with the glue. It's just not even necessary for this project. I'm just gonna press it in there and then use some really sharp scissors and trim all of that off. Be careful, don't wanna to try to cut your scissors over those little those little hook pieces there because they will dull your blades down. They are metal. Press them back down. I'm just securing my little strand of beads on the top and I'm gonna look at my placement. I'm gonna use these little tower blocks to give them some dimension and raise them up off of the burlap. I love doing this and I do it with a lot of my projects. Feel free to leave this flat if you would like to put it right down on your burlap. It'll stick down just fine but I'm going to raise mine up a little bit. It just makes it different, you know? It makes it unique. I make it my own, so you make it your own. Oh, I love s'mores. Do y'all like s'mores? And do you, have you tried the new thing where you put the Reese's peanut butter cup on instead of the Hershey's? I've heard that's good and I love Reese's. Just wondering if it's worth it. I bet it is. All right, so now to add a little extra something to it, I'm gonna take these stickers that I've had for a while. I do not know where they came from, but you can use any stickers that you find, and certainly Dollar Tree has a lot of alphabet stickers that you can use. And I'm just going to put the word s'more on here. I start off with just putting s'more, and then I decide maybe I should add an S since there are two in the frame. And my little eight-year-old daughter is trying to teach me grammar. And she told me that it needed an S. So thank you very much. So there we go. And I'm going to leave the beads the way they are, but you could paint them if you wanted to. I think they look good natural. All right. The S'more Paint Stick Mini Sign. I started off with it being kind of a large sign, but I do cut it down. I'm going to cut this paint stick right underneath where the curve is. And I'm just measuring to make sure that I cut it straight across. And I'm gonna use those same pliers to cut it down. I know you can't see very well right now, but I'm taking a little nip into each side and then I'll cut further in. If the wood splits when you do this, um, in my experience, it will go right back together. So don't be too worried, but you cut it any way that you wanna cut it. You can score it, you can cut it with 
anything you have. All right, I'm using my sanding block and I'm gonna smooth down that edge. And this will end up being about, I think maybe nine inches. I'm gonna go ahead and take that same plaster chalk paint, that marshmallow color that I like so much. And I'm going to paint the whole stick this color. This is going to be like a base layer, but it is also going to represent the marshmallow when we hand paint the s'more. So I'm gonna go all the way to the end. I'm not worried about the edges. It's really not any concern, but you can if you want. Make sure that it is dry between putting on your layers. I'm gonna take those same browns. I'm gonna take a little slanted brush here and I'm going to start with my chocolate layer. Now you can do it however you want to, but I think this is a great chocolate color. Keeping in mind right above this line is where the cracker layer is going to be. So that part is going to be pretty flat. You know, crackers are kind of flat. But when the chocolate starts to melt, it's going to dip and run over onto the marshmallow layer, which is going to be under here. So I'm adding some waves to make this look like the chocolate has melted down into the marshmallow layer. And you can just make this however you want. You can leave your straight if you would like, but I like the idea of a gooey, yummy s'more. So I'm gonna quickly just dry that layer. It is acrylic paint, so it takes just a little bit longer to dry. Then I'm gonna flip it over and do a graham cracker line. This is just gonna be pretty much a straight line, as straight as I can get it here. Just like if you were looking at a s'more. This part's pretty easy. And actually the entire thing was pretty easy. If you just have in your mind what a graham cracker looks like, and hey, if you don't and you can't imagine it, just pull up a picture on your phone. Just Google an image and then you can just go from there. All right, so I'm gonna leave the section somewhat in the middle, that's gonna be our marshmallow. The reason this other graham cracker line looks kinda of wavy is because the marshmallow has melted onto it. So you see, does that make sense to you? So now you kinda of get the idea of a melted marshmallow and chocolate layer overlapping onto our crackers. And that's how it looks. You know, if you did this with red and pink, it would look like a strip of bacon, wouldn't it? Okay. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of my jute and wrap it around one end. And I do um, glue it down in the back. And then I made the decision to cut this thing in half. I actually tried to do this um, large. You could leave it large and write something on it if you wanted. But it was just a little too big for the simplicity of what I wanted to write on it. So I just cut it in half, sanded that little section down, and then I'm just gonna freehand the word s'mores. Now this is kind of, I know you can't see it very well and I do apologize for that, but it will, it will clear up and you'll be able to see it. I don't have the best handwriting, so if you have a Cricut and you wanna use that, you can. You could use those same stickers from that sticker sheet that you used before and you could put it on there with stickers. But I just want you to be confident with whatever you have because if you don't have alphabet stickers, you don't have to give up on your project, you know? Just go and write it in there any way you want. Very easy. And you don't have to write anything on yours. You could leave it just like this. You could make two of these. You could put them together and make a set of tags to hang off your tiered tray. Whatever you would like to do. I'm just going in and adding some little dots on both of the edges. This is a black marker that I'm using. I think it's my black Arteza. Um, one of my black Arteza markers, the fine point. See, not bad. And then because s'mores make us so happy, I added a little smiley face. But you can leave that off, of course. I was practicing my handwriting on the back of the stick, you can see. Now we gotta make a stand. So I'm just gonna use one little block, a little hot glue, and now we have a stand for it. Be sure to follow me on my social media. S'more burlap trim sign. Love this one, so easy. Now you can find little signs like this at Dollar Tree or little picture frames, whichever way, um, all the time. Mine are thrifted. I'm gonna use three different color trims. I'm going to have a graham cracker color, a chocolate color, and a marshmallow color. So I'm gonna cut two pieces that need to be just long enough to wrap around the back. 
to represent our crackers. And I'm gonna put the first layer down, which is going to be my cracker. Just a little bit of glue on the back and wrap it around and making sure, you know, that it's fairly straight. Well, it would be fairly straight across the front. So you turn it over, you can see. And if it's not, while the glue's still wet, you can adjust it. So this beautiful brownish bronze color is going to be our chocolate level layer. And I'm going to add some hot glue here and put it right next to the layer that is above it. Very easy, but you need to protect your fingers, remember. We don't want to burn our fingers because then we can't craft. This is gonna be a marshmallow layer. By the way, you can color your own. Um, I know that you can get these little trims. Two of mine came from Amazon. One of those came from the thrift store, but I know that you can get them at Dollar Tree now, and if you don't have the right colors, you can dye them with tea or with coffee. You can also paint them if you would like, but it gives a lot of texture, and I really like that about this project. It's the texture of it. You know, this is, it's gonna represent a graham cracker. Does it look exactly like one? No, it does not. But I think it's really pretty. And I like the little, I like the textural element. So I'm gonna use some more of this little jute and twine rope here. And I'm gonna go underneath so we don't have any hot glue on the front. So I'm just gonna use a little skewer thing, a little mini skewer, and go right underneath. And then I'm going to tie it into a little bow. I'm not gonna pull it tight, but you certainly can do that if you want to. And I'm just gonna make two little loops, wrap the loops around each other, and tuck one of them on the inside. And now you can just pull the tails to adjust the size of your loops to get it the size that you like. If you wanna leave that part off, you can. So I also printed this off from Canva. I'm going to cut these little pieces into like tags just cutting off the ends once they're rectangles you know just cut the ends off and then it looks like a tag and I'm gonna do the same thing with happiness we could all use a little more happiness couldn't we yes we could and you could you could do some more joy some more happiness some more kindness some more love some more summer anything that you want to do that gives you a little positive message to look at I think that happiness is good. I use joy a lot. So I switched it up this time and I like it right there. So I'm gonna add just a little hot glue on the back and then stick it, kind of tuck it right underneath the loops of the bow. And now we have this little precious s'more happiness sign. And it has its own little kickstand. This is really cute. Now we're gonna do roasted marshmallows. Yes, we are, but it's not what you think. All right, so you're gonna use some beads. You can use any old white bead you have or you can use any bead that you can paint. I got these little skewer sticks. I'm gonna use the uh, plaster paint. And then I have, um, I decided I wanted to use these because they look to me more like a marshmallow, the shape of a marshmallow. So I'm just gonna add some glue in here on my cool temperature just to kind of fill the bead up. And because the inside of the bead is much longer than the diameter of the skewer stick we're putting in there, I need to build it out a little bit so that the stick will stay toward the center. I'm just gonna twist it in there to make sure that the glue is everywhere it needs to be. And I'm not concerned with the glue on the tip or what is underneath. We're not gonna worry about that because it does add to the look. Um, you know, if you've roasted marshmallows before, you know good and well that it slides up and down that stick and makes a little bit of a gooey mess. So we're just gonna work with that. I'm gonna add a little bit on the top. And then you can set it aside to dry. I just had mine sitting in a tape spool so it would stay upright. We're gonna do the same thing on this one. Place it in there toward the center. Now to paint it, I'm gonna put it in a piece of foam, a little styrofoam. And then I'm going to just paint all over the marshmallow. I wanna go around the edges go underneath the edge, go over the top, go over the edge of the stick, just where, you know, a marshmallow would melt. I'm getting underneath the bottom so that you don't 
We don't see any of that brown under there. And then you can let this dry or you can add to your stick. I'm gonna use just the tiniest amount of antiquing wax on these sticks to make them look like they've been outside, maybe even been whittled down from a stick when you go camping or maybe found in the woods somewhere. You can skip this part if you would like. If you don't have antiquing wax, you can use coffee to stain it or you can use paint. I'm gonna go right around the bottom and then we're gonna dry them. This part, they need to be good and dry because we're gonna add just a little bit of streakiness from what was left on that brush all over that marshmallow. This is gonna make it look like it was roasted. It's gonna give it that yummy brown crispness. Uh, who wants a s'more right now? If you don't want one after you watch this video, then you just must have an aversion to marshmallows, is all I can say because I know I want some. Look at that. Doesn't that look realistic? I mean, you know, as far as crafting goes, that's pretty good. Now, this is a little thrifted piece. I don't even know. It's some type of a log or some old coral or something. It came with some beachy stuff. You can just stick those sticks down in that hole, just like that. If you don't have something like that, you can use a little clay pot with some foam in it. You could glue it down onto any stick you find in the yard, whatever you got. I'm going to cut these at two different lengths, and I'm just going to poke them down in here. I'm not even going to glue them, and they are ready for the next camper. All right, so I'm going to give you two tray options here. The first one is a tear tray. This is a Target tray that I got on clearance for $2.50. There is two different little white trays, and it has gold trim. You can paint yours whatever you want because the plates come off. You can actually use them for desserts. I love that about this. Very easy options here. Now, there are some more of those little s'more stickers on the ladder. Wanted to make it look a little more cohesive. I like this. Very simple. And your other option would be to use just a riser. And this is one that I made in a video a while back. So this is one tier. You can decorate on top, put the little banner or the garland to hang down on the bottom, and then put your goodies around the base of it. What do you think about this option? I like it. I would love it if you would subscribe to the channel. I do videos two times a week at five o'clock on Mondays and Thursdays. I appreciate you so very much. I believe in you. I'll see you soon. Bye.